Hey everyone, in the last video we went over setNC in full detail, and today I bring you some more information on setNC that I hope you'll find useful. The most important thing I'll cover today is how to take a bunch more pictures of Bailey Speeds and Diamond Ring by manipulating your exposure tables manually. And we'll also cover an easy way to get your elevation, minor interface bug fixes, and clarify what delta T is because I explained it wrong last time, and we'll look at the autofill function of the exposure table. For my testing today, I'll be using my old Canon T2i. This is an Astromod T2i with my Samyang 14 millimeter wide angle lens. This is what I'll be using to try and catch the planets and some stars if they're visible in wide field. One thing to know about this lens is that it's completely manual, which means that focus needs to be achieved manually, as well as the f-stop needs to be achieved manually. So we won't be able to see the f-stop within the application, it'll just be blank. And I'm using a dummy battery with this so that I can connect this directly to my mini PC and power both of them in one go without having to worry about a battery. And this is connected to my Miele mini PC, which is sitting right here. Pretty small, fanless, and it runs pretty well. So let's dive in. So I'm remotely connected to my mini PC and I already have set NC running. The first thing I'll mention is that you don't need Canon EOS utility running. A few of you have told me that you were able to get this running without Canon EOS Utility. And in this PC here, my Miele Mini PC, I did not install Canon EOS Utility. So that saves you some time as well as space from having to install that software. But you may still want to install it because in between your exposures, you may have time to download your images directly onto your computer. So next, I want to reinforce that you need to set your computer to UTC time zone. It's not a recommendation, it's a requirement. As you see in the contact times on the screen here, these are all running in UT time. And if your system time is off, if it's an Eastern time zone, you're going to completely miss the eclipse because the contact times won't line up. So a lot of professional eclipse chasers will use UTC time to time their eclipses because it's a better standard. And you don't have to worry about shifting time zones, you don't have to worry about daylight saving time, etc. In this video, I'm not going to go over my latitude and longitude changes, but I will show you a really easy way of getting the elevation or height. You can do this in Google Earth, or you can open up Javier Jubier's map again, and it has some really useful information here, including elevation. So if you zoom into where I'm going to be, it's going to be Marble Falls, somewhere around here. There it is. I click just somewhere here. You can see that it has a height here of 257 meters. Click here, 388 meters. So this is a really easy way of getting your height. And you can put in your exact address here, search it up, and then get the height and put it into set NC. As easy as that. Next up, after my last video, Robert Neufer fixed a couple of the UI bugs, the user interface bugs that we ran into, including the form size. So now we have three options. We have large, normal, and small. Normal is the default. When you click large, it becomes large. You can't get any larger. Normal goes back to normal, and small goes to small. Uh, the bug that we saw last time was when you get too large, the font sizes don't scale back down, and that was fixed. So thank you, Robert. And before we move on to this screen, I want to talk a little bit about Delta T. First, I want to apologize if I confused some of you. Some of you have had questions about what I was talking about with Delta T. I apologize. I was trying to be clever and use Delta T as a way to make minor adjustments to the contact time that they didn't match. I was mostly referring to the lunar limb correction that you can see on Javier Jubier's website on his eclipse map, but it's not good practice, so ignore what I said about Delta T in the last video, and I'll tell you exactly what it is now and how we use it. So in short, Delta T is the discrepancy of time between our clocks and how quickly the Earth rotates. So every single day is 24 hours or 86,400 seconds. That's our atomic clock, that's our standard of time. Delta T says that it is currently 69.2 seconds faster. That means the Earth spins 69.2 seconds faster than 86,400 seconds, or, or if I pull up a calculator, 400 minus 69.2, 86,330 .8 seconds. So that's how quickly the Earth rotates. And for this eclipse, you shouldn't worry about this at all because it is currently set to 69.2 and that is the current value. It's actually, I think, 69.18, but it's close enough. I believe this was put here as a way to future-proof this application. So if you're using this like in 2027, let's say, and you're in Egypt, and this application hasn't seen an update in a few years, and you can use the Delta T to correct for the Earth's rotation for 2027, 
and it probably won't remain 69.2 seconds. First, if you go to the Navy website, they actually track Delta T. They have a monthly update going back to 1973. And you can see 1973, I'll zoom in way much. You can see 1973, the Delta T was 43.4 seconds. And if we scroll all the way down to, it has information from January, for, January 2024, and it was 69.17. So you can see that the times goes up and down a little bit, but it's been 69 for a few years. And in 2017, it was actually 68.83. A second here and there doesn't matter much, but if you start seeing, you know, they're spinning way faster than it is, then the location as well as the timing of the contact times of the eclipse will be very different because the times just won't sync. All right, that's Delta T. Next, let's connect to our camera. So I'll click on camera. We have this camera, I'm gonna click on connect. It will connect to my Canon T2i, again, with that Canon EOS utility. And you can see that, as I said, this is a manual manual lens. I cannot control the aperture here, so it's just what it is. So now we can go to the exposure tables and I have a couple of cool things here that I should mention. Uh, the first thing is, so after speaking to a couple of people, I have been convinced to shoot all of my images in RAW and not RAW JPEG large. Uh, maybe in my wide field, I'll still do raw JPEG large just because it doesn't really matter as much for the precise timing of Bailey's beads and totality because it's just such a wide angle. But if you're using a longer focal length lens or a telescope, shoot in raw uh, because your camera will save the image to the memory card much faster and you don't have to worry about any kind of write delays. And on this screen, Robert also fixed another UI bug that I mentioned, which is if you go to the options and you click on max exposure eight seconds, previously the user interface did not update. It would still say four seconds if you click eight seconds, but now look, it, it updates to eight seconds. But I'll still use four seconds so that I can capture more and more shots. Eight seconds is a lot of time and I don't want it to loop eight seconds a whole bunch of times. So let's keep it at that. So I'll change my ISO to 200 as I usually do. F number I can't change because it's a manual lens and then I'll click on create exposure table. So we can see that the F column here, the F ratio column is blank it's because we don't have anything here, but that's okay. We don't really need it. It's just for data of the table itself. But if you want to, you can actually just include it here and copy and paste it all the way down. But I'm just gonna leave it as is. Next cool thing I wanna show you is if you ever used Excel, this will be really helpful for you, especially if you don't know what autofill is. So let's say, you know, I wanna do like X here, X here, X here. If you look at the bottom right corner here, there's this little black square dot here, and that's the autofill dot. So if I wanna copy all of this down here, so I can highlight them, control C, highlight all of these and do control V to paste them all, or you can use autofill. You click, hold, left click on this, and then click and drag, and you can see it's getting dragged down, and I let go and it autofills. Super cool, right? We can do the same thing for the F8 here. So now I can hold this autofill square, drag it down, and it picks F8 or fills it with F8. So pretty cool. I noticed this after I recorded my last video, so I didn't get a chance to show you, but I wanted, really wanted to show you because I do love Excel. And we'll talk about Excel again right now. So one thing uh, someone from my astronomy club pointed out, thank you, Ben, is that there's a pretty big gap between the remove filters wave files playing and when Bailey's beat starts. So it's actually better if I set the Bailey's beats exposure from 10 seconds, it's a little bit easier to math. So I'll just recreate the exposure tables. It removes my customizations, but that's okay. But we'll see that between the remove wave filters and the first Bailey's bead shot, is about 40 seconds. So there's a 40 second gap here where you remove the filters and you are not imaging. So I spoke with Robert Neufer and confirmed that the reason the, this gap exists here is because he wants to give you time to remove your filters before the Bailey's beads start shooting. And that's okay, but I think most of us don't really need 40 seconds. And another point that Ben made is that you don't really need a gap here. You can say remove filters, and you can start imaging. So what will happen is that you'll end up getting more partial phases with the filter on up until you remove the filter and then you automatically go into Bailey speeds. It can seem a little bit more chaotic, but you end up getting a lot more exposure, up to 40 more 
for Bailey speeds, which is incredible. And now you can do an even more exposures at different exposure lengths. So how do we fix this? So two ways to fix this is if you go into Bailey speeds here, you right click on the left column here. You can do like insert before, insert a couple of lines. You can copy this row, control C, go here, control V. Uh, you don't, you wanna make sure that you're not taking any images in the same second because then you will regret it once things start stalling. And then take this, do five, and there we go. And now we have something for the, uh, for six o'clock, 16 minutes and 5.7 seconds. Great, you can do this over and over again for 40 lines. Or, or if you know a little bit of Excel, you can make this a lot easier for yourself. So this is not an Excel video, but I'll show you really quickly how I did this. So I'll have Excel here. So I'll zoom in a bunch. First thing we're going to do when we're here is for convert these two first two columns here into text. Otherwise we will have some issues with conversions. And then I'll go to my set NC. We want to copy this, the last remove wave filters wave file, and then go into Excel, copy that, and then paste it here. Let's expand that. And then we want to go to our last one here. 860 or our first Bailey speeds here. And then in Excel, it's going to be like row 41, I believe. And now, so we want to make sure we take the seconds from 26 all the way to 59 first, because otherwise then it'll become zero, zero. So I'll explain that soon. So the 26, 27, we need two for a pattern. I'm sorry if I'm going really fast, but I'm using the autofill dot here and auto filling all the way down to 59 because you saw 60 seconds in time is going to be zero zero so i'll have to redo that i'm going to copy this here i'm going to get rid of the seconds and the milliseconds i'm going to create a new formula here i'll say this a two and which is the uh, concatenation b2 and we need uh, 0.7 for all of these and there you go so now I'm just gonna copy this over see we have 26 27 and I'm just going to autofill this so I double clicked it in Excel double click works at NC does not work so I have 18 15 and all of them and I'm gonna click here double click and now it filled 26 27 28 all the way to 59 great right so now we need this one so it'll be zero zero right zero one Let's see if it'll autofill. There we go. Zero six, right? So it should have been on 42. Uh, no, actually I did this right. So it'll be here so I can get rid of this one. Okay. So now I bring this here. Now this is going to be 816. Right, and then I'll copy, paste that there. And then I will copy, select this one, autofill, select it all the way to the fourth. You can see now I have 18, 15, 58, 58, 15, 59, 16, 0, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. I'm not going to just copy this over. So now I have 40 rows between those. So I only need to take rows 2 to row 39. But first I'm going to go into set NC again. I need to insert uh, 36 more rows. So let's do this, insert before. So I'll copy this, all of these, and then I'll go to here again, and then here. Uh, you can see that it uh, added the same time here instead of inserted line. So I'll just get rid of those, delete those, and if I did it right, I'll have 27, 28, I pasted, 57, look at that, 58, 59, 60, 4. So it, it overwrote some of this, but pretty cool right so now I can just I don't need to do this it can stay inserted line uh, but here I can do this and then I can autofill upwards there we go and now I can do like uh, 10 I can get rid of this and I can add can I move this I can't move this I'll do X or control X to cut and I'll paste it here so that I'm doing a bunch in one two thousandths of a second. I'll leave these, I'll leave those, and then maybe for these here, if 
five of these, I'll do one five hundredth of a second. And then I'll go back to normal here, right? So one one hundredth of a second in totality. Uh, so there's 10 of those, maybe five. I will do one five hundredth of a second. And then it'll repeat loop. And then we have the Bailey speed before C3 and then attach filters. So the gap between attach filters and Bailey speeds C3 is only 10 seconds uh, when you do the 10 seconds. So I think that's fine. I'll leave it 10 seconds. Uh, even like when I really do it, I think I'll probably not do all the way to the second, probably give myself like five seconds to pull the filters off. But there we go. Now there's less of a gap and we have 40 more exposures during Bailey speeds. And I think that'll, this will look amazing. So the other thing you can do that I'm not going to show you today because I don't have Canon EOS utility downloaded on this computer is that in between shots, especially if you're doing like five, four or five minutes between exposures in the partial phase, you can disconnect your camera connect to Canon EOS Utility, download your images, and connect back to set and see, and turn on the Eclipse or the exposure table. And because of your UT time, your computer is synced to UT time, it'll just keep continuing and, and continue from the next exposure. You can of course also just delete the old rows so that it doesn't repeat it. I don't think it will, but it's something that you can do to try and back up your data. Again, I know the Excel part may have been a little bit intimidating. It's uh, it's just a lot of autofills, concatenation, and copying and pasting, really. But I hope you understand that the idea was just to generate times every second from the wave file all the way to when the C2 uh, Bailey's bead starts. Of course, you can do this manually, just copy paste all of them, change the seconds one by one. It could take you just as long to do this as that, but that's not something to be really intimidated with. And if you have any questions, let me know. I am planning on doing a full run through of all of my gear this coming weekend. I'm just waiting for one more power adapter to be delivered. And once that's here, I'm going to do a full walkthrough by setting all my computer's clocks to April 8th and seeing what it'll be like. I will record the process and I won't let you make you sit through all of it, but, but I would encourage you to do something similar so that when the time comes, it'll be, you'll be ready. And even if you're not watching set and see, I hope that my testing, watching how I test will be helpful in making you understand how you should test as well. And if you haven't yet joined our discord server, check out the link in the description. We have other members who are planning on taking images of the eclipse. I'm trying to help as many people as I can. So you can reach out to me there, ask me questions all the way up until the eclipse or up until I lose internet when I head into the middle of nowhere in Texas. And lastly, I did launch a limited edition an Astronomy 2024 Total Solar Eclipse t-shirt here that you can get from my website at nastronomy.com shop. There are plenty of colors. Uh, the shipping is free. So if you want one to commemorate the eclipse, uh, consider getting one of these shirts and I would greatly appreciate it. And if you have any questions about anything I covered, please let me know in the comments below. Clear skies.